Greetings and salutations, this is Kung Pao, enter the minute, minute six, opening frame. A mostly white picture of the chosen one? We immediately cut to a zoom in on some straw on fire. It cuts to a shot of the chosen one atop an extremely rocky hillside. A flickering light in the back indicates the burning shack behind him. The chosen one slowly crawls forward to freedom and immediately starts sliding down the hill rolling uncontrollably and bouncing off the rocks. He manages to right himself on a large boulder sticking out of the ground, but only for a moment as he restarts his descent down the hill, a booty flying off into the distance. Thankfully the booty is returned in the next shot as the chosen one bounces his way down the hill and comes to a stop at a path where a peasant woman just happens to be walking by. The woman picks up the chosen one, cradling and calls him so cute. before kissing him on the forehead. We immediately sense a bond between these two people, and we know that she'll teach the Chosen One what it means to be here. Nope, she just tossed him across the other side of the path. Just before we cut towards the opening credits, we see the Chosen One continue rolling down the hill on the rocky hillside, perhaps towards his destiny. The song from Rush Home With Love by Min Royale starts up as the titles of an O Entertainment and production and a Steve Odekirk film zooming onto the screen and then fading away. An explosion followed by the words Kung Pao and on the closing frame we see the logo but without the end of the fist. So we actually have a few things to talk about here. I unironically think this is actually a very key scene. It's kind of a bit stupid and I think that's kind of the point. As I previously stated with the karate baby you know this kind of helps set up the tone even though it has no informational value on the plot and the characters and stuff to a certain degree it tells you what you're getting and I think this scene is key to that idea. Okay so one of the key parts in comedy is subversion. We saw this in previous minutes with a literally baby kicking the crap out of a fully grown man. This is where this scene is very pivotal as well. It's not the baby falling down the hill numerous times, which is very funny. But that moment with the peasant woman, if you've watched any of these type of movies, you know, the hero's journey or anything like, you know, the young orphan, like, you know, this is like the Superman narrative. This is, this is classic storytelling. This would be the moment where the abandoned child gets picked up and raised. It's also s- cinematically shot in that way. You know, the whole close up with the woman holding the child and, you know, saying so cute and it's shot to give you this cinematic bond between these two characters. <laughs> and then the child is like almost immediately thrown away. It's amazing. Steve actually points this out in the audio commentary. Okay, now now here this is a pivotal part of the opening where the peasant woman comes up and, and picks up the chosen one and it's really a touching moment, wouldn't you say? I was truly engaged. You know she's gonna take the baby in and nurture this, it, raise it. Yeah, and everything will be terrific. Then whoops It was a deliberate action on the part of the filmmakers to play to your expectations and subvert it. This is actually a really good point in comedy. Uh, not comedy is all about gags, pratfalls, and all that. Sometimes it is just about giving an audience an expectation, something they know and can follow, and then going in a complete opposite direction. And this can work, and sometimes it can't work. Let's be fair. That's kind of the danger of subversion. If we take like the idea of like comedy and drama the whole dual duality thing you know subversion is also great for comedy and horror subverting normal tropes is also great for horror this is also why comedy horror also really works very well that's why sam raimi can do some great horrific things that make you laugh your ass off it's all part of the same thing i particularly do like trying to use subversion you know in a lot of my writing or you know when i've done a couple of short films and stuff like that i I try and have a bit of subversion my short film the game the final version of which was directly inspired by kung pao enter the fist i i like the idea of taking these tropes of you know the martial arts master and subverting it into this dumb game about chess and that kind of made me laugh 
there's no real wrong way to do subversion to a certain degree. I guess the only way it will work or not is if the audience laughs, and you can't really predict the audience laughing too much unless it's like just flat out unfunny, and that's probably a different argument we'll get into at a later point. Another thing about comedy, and this one has it in spades, is sound effects. The visual of the baby rolling down the hill is one thing. In isolation, it could be kind of horrific. I mean, it's clearly a doll. I point out that the one of the booties like literally flies off in one scene and it's magically there in the next scene. Yes, it's continuity, but it's also a comedy thing. So it's like, if anyone gets hung up about continuity out like that, they're missing the point. But what really makes this scene genius for me is the baby. That just short loop of sound. And then the break for the... <laughs> you can hear the baby's not in distress, which makes it, again, a bit of subversion. Like, you know, the, the baby's not crying. It's almost like you can hear the baby's just being bounced on her knee. And then the heavy repetition of that. It's comedy gold. I, I, what else can I say? It's brilliant. It's really funny. And I think the demon CGI baby early on probably didn't sell me on this movie as much as this particular moment it's made me go i think i'm gonna enjoy this it probably was the i'm in safe hands moment when i realized yeah i'm i'm probably gonna have a lot of fun with this film and again this could also land poorly with other people there's people who don't like they dead baby jokes and stuff like that they they find any depiction of cruelty regardless of context to be bad and that's that's again that's a fair criticism I'm, I'm not going to disparage that you're entitled that's part of critique but i think the point of this is to say you know we're gonna get silly there's clearly nothing happening to this child it also helps to a certain degree set up the idea of the chosen one having some sort of power i mean We'll get to it later on when um, we have the uh, staff beating up scene. The Chosen One can take a fair whack of punishment and kind of shake it off. Again, this is played for comedy throughout the entire film. His power level goes up or down depending on what needs to happen. He's great against multiple foes, but he's very poor against Evil Betty. But Evil Betty is deliberately supposed to be the big boss. So there's a lot of things going on there. But... I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk about that very much later on. Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about is YouTube. Yes, copyright. YouTube copyright. Ay. So my original intention was to use the From Rush Home With Love theme as music for this uh, series because it's such a fun, quirky piece of music. It's I genuinely delight in listening to the song. And yeah, I tried to mix with it in, it automatically got flagged for copyright. So I went with the Robert Fork music. Unfortunately, I'm recording this after a hard drive crash. So this episode may sound slightly different. The visual might be slightly different because I've had to reconstruct everything from scratch until I can somehow retrieve three terabytes worth of hard drive and then sort out all the working files and all that. So yeah, it, it might not be worth the effort trying to revert it exactly like the original. So now we get to the audio commentary. Steve Odekirk gives us some Eastern philosophy for the baby. Eastern philosophy kind of thing. Well, who, who am I to stop the rolling baby? Now, the what are they really saying section. There's a bit of dialogue from the peasant woman, and it's this. I, I don't know what it is, but she doesn't even speak over the bye-bye bit, so I've just got it to say something. Again, this is all created for this movie. And we shall end this with a grab from the audiobook. Bye-bye. I think that wraps it up for this minute. Uh, if you like this, uh, please click a thumb, comment, subscribe, share all that. Uh, I do upload on SoundCloud as well as YouTube. I have a Kofi, coffee, whatever it is. Uh, links down below. I also have Patreon. Please, please, please someone just pay me some money. Yeah. As, as little as a buck or you know, something like that. I do have a couple of tears, but you know, that's just, you know, it's just a bit of fun. Yeah, you know, it's, it's 2020, it's, 
it's been a bit of a rough year i'm hoping i'm entertaining you in at least some marginal way and i'm not saying you should give me money but i'm saying you should give me some money <laughs> I, I i honestly don't care <laughs> it's just that thing we are expected to do and i might as well just put it off on there because some some you know, random billionaire might come across my YouTube channel and go, wow, I really should give that guy a dollar. Because they're all kindness and light, those billionaires are. Anyway, yeah, but seriously though, please share this around. Uh, you know, I, I can only grow my audience through you guys, and uh, I, I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, I hope to have more out there, despite all the technical hiccups and the world constantly exploding. So, if the uh, if the world is still around by next week, I hope to see you there. <laughs> Bye.